Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today's deck was recorded during the early Axis event, so thank you Wizards of the Coast for letting me participate. So I was able to use a fully unlocked account to preview some of the cool cards from the upcoming The Brothers War expansion. And today's deck is quite spicy. We're playing four copies of Portal to Phyrexia, a 9-mana Mythic Rare artifact that when it enters the battlefield makes each opponent sacrifice three creatures. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, put any creature card Card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, and it's also a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. So we're not trying to cast Portal for 9 mana, instead we have 8 5 mana ways to bring it back from the graveyard, including the new Repair and Recharge, returning an Artifact, Enchantment or Planeswalker card from our graveyard to the battlefield, in addition to making a Power Stone token, which is also helpful in potentially still hard casting some of our more expensive artifacts. And then we're also playing four copies of Invoke Justice, which can return any permanent card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and also distributes four plus one plus one counters among any number of creatures we control. So on turn 5 we can already bring back Portal to wreak havoc on the opponent's board, and eventually steal their creatures as well. Then we've got more exciting, expensive cards to bring back from the graveyard, with three copies of one with the multiverse. Eight mana enchantment, saying you may look at the top card of your library at any time, and you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library, so a future sight effect as it's known. And then once during each of our turns, we may also cast a spell from our hand or the top of our library without paying its mana cost. And the more copies of one with the multiverse we have in play, the more times we get to cast a free spell, so having a second copy in play is still somewhat helpful. And then of course getting to cast a free portal to Phyrexia is quite satisfying, and so is casting a free cityscape leveler, 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight, with trample, saying whenever we cast this spell or whenever the leveler attacks, destroy up to one target non land permanent and its controller replaces it with a tapped power stone token and this also has unearth for eight mana so we can bring it back once from the graveyard and it will attack with haste to destroy one more permanent and then exile at end of turn so the leveler we can potentially also bring back with portal to phyrexia and we can potentially cast for free with our one with a multiverse so that's our late game cheating these expensive spells onto the battlefield as early as turn four since we have access to two copies of the celestus to give us an extra mana on turn four and it can also help us discard and draw as it switches between day and night and we've got a few additional discard outlets with four copies of faithful mending on turn two we'll gain two life draw two cards and then discard two cards and we can also flash it back out of the graveyard and at three mana the full set of thirst for knowledge to draw three cards and then discard two unless we discard an artifact card and most of our top end are artifacts so we're happy enough discarding those to keep additional cards in hand and then our interaction comes in the form of two copies of Fateful Absence to destroy a creature or planeswalker, give the opponent a clue token in return, but we even have a way of getting rid of the opponent's clue tokens with temporary lockdown. When it enters, exile each non-land permanent with mana value 2 or less until lockdown leaves the battlefield, so a great sweeper against smaller creatures from the opponent, so great against aggro, which can be our weakness if we're off to a slower start. And then lockdown we can also bring back with Repair and Recharge, with Invoke Justice, and uh, we can also again exile opposing clue tokens that we gave them with Fateful Absence, so that's pretty nice. And then we also have two copies of Depopulate as a more classic sweeper, destroying all creatures. And then finally two copies of the Wandering Emperor, which also gives us some nice interaction, being able to exile tapped creatures, making samurai tokens, which we can then potentially load some plus one counters onto with Invoke Justice. And we can also bring back our Emperor with our five mana reanimation effects, so that can also come up in the late game. And then our mana base, pretty simple, lots of blue-white dual lands, since we need quadruple white on turn 5, so can't afford too many islands in our mana base. And then some utility lands with Aiganjo and Soaring City, no real other utility lands since we have a pretty strict mana requirement here, but otherwise we could potentially include more. But yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing a 5 mana reanimation effect, but otherwise I'm down. Don't even have to play a turn to mending, but since I already have something I actively want to discard, that seems fine. Up against a white deck, turn to informants, but might also be discarding some expensive cards here. 
And yeah, portal to Phyrexia, so it's a mirror match of sorts. Well, our plan is pretty clear. Turn 4, invoke justice. Thanks to the Celestis. And then we could go with the one with the multiverse here. Since our opponent doesn't have a ton of creatures for us to get rid of. And then play a free Thirst for Knowledge, maybe. And Portal to Phyrexia I want to keep in hand to cast for free. So I'll discard a couple lands. Okay. So we're in decent shape. Opponent might be able to bring back their own portal here. So it's going to be a bit of a back and forth. But this powerful enchantment should pull us ahead. Okay, can repair and recharge off the top of our deck. And then I guess it also works, sure. So we'll cast that for free. Make them sacrifice all three creatures. Haven't played land for the turn yet. And then... I guess we can still play Wandering Emperor if we'd like. And see if our opponents get to run Invoke Justice. Just an informant. So at this point we're looking for a Cityscape Leveler to completely take over. Make a Samurai. Bring back... I guess a Spirited Companion is fine here. Okay. A land for free. Invoke Justice can bring back... Not a whole lot here, unless we want to try and discard our Portal to Phyrexia first. Which I guess also makes sense. So sure. Portal to Phyrexia. And another Faithful Mending. And then a Free Invoke Justice. Bring back another Portal, which is not legendary by the way. Get some counters. And now we can reanimate two creatures per turn. That opponent's gonna flicker the architect. That's fine. Attack for four. And then we could still Fateful Absence if needed. Bring back Companion. So now we don't have as many targets in the graveyard. Opponent can get rid of one of the portals. I guess that happens. Do we want to do anything? I guess I can always flash back Faithful Mending. And don't really need lands at this point. Bring back an informant. And there's another portal waiting for us. So a ton of options. But I guess going for portal supremacy is not a bad idea.
Thirst for knowledge is great too. Keep digging. So let's attack. And then I guess we'll thirst for knowledge end of turn. Also good to keep the graveyards mostly empty for a potential opposing portal. Alright, opponent's got the leveler to destroy a creature. Although now if we get rid of the opponent's leveler, we can reanimate it. So maybe slightly regretting getting rid of my fateful absence, but there's another one. Okay. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, missing something big to discard and a reanimation spell. But we have a lot of card draw to hopefully find those cards, so I'll try it. Celestis could also come in handy. And then Mending, maybe discarding another Mending. Opponent on what could be a multicolor domain deck. Turn to Prowler. Okay. Double strike teams, so not sure what to make of this. Repair and recharge is great. So mending and probably a land can go. Alright, so I could go for Celestis. Although it's not like I'm gonna repair and recharge next turn. Still gives me a bit of a mana boost, and then I can maybe just loot by passing the turn, letting it switch to Knight, and then still cast Thirst or Wandering Emperor during the opponent's turn. Opponent with old Rudstein, so they do seem to have a bit of a graveyard synergy. Alright, we'll stick to the plan. Pass, and then what to discard here is another question. I guess I'll land. And then I should probably go for Thirst over Wandering Emperor, but we'll see if Rudstein attacks. Alright, there's a strike team. If our opponent makes a lot of tokens, they can sort of get around our portal to Phyrexia to an extent. Could also go for Emperor, make a 2-2 two -two token to ambush a 1-1. One -one. Although I think I should keep digging with Thirst to find a big creature or spell to reanimate. Alright, there we go. And then I could still Mending if I'd like, just to gain some life. And then... Probably fine to keep the Tranquil Cove, since I'm gonna pay 5 mana for Repair and Recharge next turn. Wandering Emperor can maybe go alongside the basic land. Leveler is great too. Bring back portal. Opponent can sack three one ones, but there's already a few creatures for us to reanimate, and we're still at a relatively healthy life total. The extra power stone token could also come in handy if we just want a hard cast leveler, which we're very close to. Ooh, I see. Dollhouse of Horrors. That makes a lot of sense. But uh, we're gonna reanimate Urza here. And then... Cannot quite play Leveler this turn. But I can maybe Thirst for Knowledge. And then... I'm kind of more interested in casting the Leveler next turn. So this turn we can go for a Wandering Emperor. So we'll discard maybe another Thirst and one Repair and Recharge. Uh, 
And if I play this now, I can switch it back to daytime as well. Maybe exile Rudstein. And Mending can go. Alright, we've got our portal working overtime. And next turn, cast Leveler, destroy the Dollhouse of Horrors, hopefully. You can see Deathbloom Ritualist, so that works quite well with the whole graveyard theme. And our opponent's gonna bring it back. So this can now make 4 mana for another dollhouse. Okay. They can activate it once again. So yeah, I can kind of see the synergies from our opponent's deck. Call on Strike team to give the team haste. Also very good with uh, dollhouse. If you can set up a big turn. Try not to miss me. Get back Strike Team. Cast Leveler. Taking out a Dollhouse. And then attack, thanks to the haste here. So that's pretty neat. And uh, sure. Destroy another Dollhouse. So using the opponent's cards against them. And while they can still make a lot of mana, hopefully they're out of ways to use that mana. I guess they could have their own cityscape leveler here for all we know. And then there's still a repair and recharge, can bring back our wandering emperor at the very least. And we can keep digging with faithful mending. Take four. A Ritualist makes three mana and there's a Depopulate. All right, we'll wipe the board. But uh, Portal to Phyrexia can bring back her own leveler as well. Opponent reanimates Urza, which we can also absence. Although not too threatened by the ability at the moment. Another option was to bring back another strike team, repair and recharge the leveler so it gained haste and could attack right away. Although this seems pretty sweet too. <laughs> cast another free one with the multiverse. Which means we can cast another spell for free. And lockdown's not bad here, get rid of all the opponent's tokens. Or we can repair and recharge and uh, bring back something else. Let's just cast this free lockdown. And pass it back. Lockdown also a good combo with her own Fateful Absence, give the opponent a clue token but then take it back. Opponent discarding Diagraph Rebirth once again. And yeah, they're kind of on empty now. Can grab a strike team. Play some lanes for free. Can mending to keep digging. Free invoke justice for counters. And then bring back a wandering emperor. Free portal to Phyrexia. Another one coming up. And this should be a lethal attack. Alright, sweet. Could also destroy our own permanence here to make power stone tokens. I guess a lockdown is not really necessary. And also potentially a way to put them back in the graveyard to then once again reanimate on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems pretty decent. Up against turn 1 forest, so turn 2 mending, can discard portal, 
And hopefully turn 5, bring it back. Beast Caller, alright. So against the creature deck, the portal should be quite effective. But our opponent can deal quite a bit of damage in the meantime. So the extra life gain from Mending and Wandering Emperor is also going to come in handy. They may be concerned about counter spells as well. So that's another advantage of instant speed card draw. And opponent goes for a Blanche with armor anyways. So not too concerned about removal. Take five. And we'll be looking for a Wandering Emperor to exile the Beast Caller maybe. I guess Igantia doesn't really deal enough damage to the Beast Caller, so I'm better off casting Thirst. So at that point, maybe discard a Tranquil Cove as well. Or I should discard two non-artifacts, so Thirst can discard Portal by itself. In which case, I guess Repair and Recharge and a Land can go. Alright. So that worked out. Now Thirst discards Portal. Next turn Emperor, and then we should likely find another land for a turn 5. Either Repair or Invoke. Invoke would be nice if we have a leftover Samurai token. Alright, Mishra's Foundry. A creature land could be threatening, although at least it doesn't give extra power to the Blanchwood armor. Another Beast Scholar will pump it instead. And a Kami of Transients. Fair enough. Well, that's three creatures waiting to be removed by portal, but let's see if we can survive in the meantime. Discard portal. And a lockdown also looks pretty decent, so that's probably worthwhile. All creatures exiled. Better than something that destroys as Akami wouldn't be able to come back. And now there's just a Mishra's Foundry to worry about. Which honestly is not bad here since it dodges Portal to Phyrexia, removing it. So there's even a world where we're better off not casting our reanimation effect and going for a Wandering Emperor first. Can also use Iganjo as another removal spell. Alright, Clay Champion. Pretty good too here as a 5-5. Sadly the Foundry preventing it from being even bigger. So now going for a portal is probably still okay. So let's repair and recharge. Get back portal. Bringing back clay champion. Not the best. It's just going to be a 2-2. But we've got plenty more action in hand. Another 5-5 five five champion. And, uh, yeah, we can go for an Invoke Justice, although there's nothing really to bring back. So I either Mending here, or I can go for a Wandering Emperor, which is probably the play. Kodama to give Champion Trample, although we should be able to exile it unless our opponent's got a Protection spell in place. Exiling not as good as destroying when we control portal, but I'll take it. And then now maybe go for mending first. And see what we pick up. One lockdown can go, and a land. Alright, just looking for another finisher here. Cityscape Leveler, for instance, would do nicely. And thanks to the Power Stone, we can also cast it next turn. Alright, another armor. So that's a pretty large trampling Kodama. Gives itself trample. Could still trade with Iganjo here, which I don't mind. It's not going to save Wandering Emperor, but will still result in a trade. And we can use the Power Stones for channel abilities, at least. So now we can bring back Kodama. And modify it ourselves with Invoke Justice. 
bringing back Wandering Emperor. And we'll make a samurai. Another Kami. And yeah, a third armor. Kami 7-7. Seven, seven. Bring back champion. And yeah, there's no white mana spent here. So let's go digging with Thirst. Fateful Absence will do. Get Kami out of the way. And keep up the pressure. Can even enable Kodama here to get two lanes. And that should wrap things up. Opponent replays Kami. And Audacity now instead of uh, Blanchwood Armor. So your opponent's got a nice green enchantment deck. Hardcast Portal, why not? And attack for the win. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hand is missing a discard outlet, although I guess Celestis sort of works. So we can use that to discard our one with the multiverse, bring it back on turn four potentially, although that's going to be tricky given that I need to switch to nighttime first. So yeah, we're looking at a turn five, one with the multiverse, if all goes according to plan. Also up against blue-white could be a more controlling strategy. Never mind human. So maybe a five-color human deck. And yeah, we'll still go for Celestis. And then next turn, pass a turn. Let it switch to knights. Can still thirst. All right, bodyguard protects from depopulate. It does not protect from a portal to Phyrexia, if that's what we find, or a lockdown for that matter. So that seems like a pretty good answer for now. But yeah, bodyguard very good against depopulate in particular. Shield of Argive is going to force us to play stuff in our turn. Could also just depopulate here. Opponent doesn't get to draw since it's not multicolor. And then next turn, keep on going with Thirst. Uh oh. Loran to destroy the temporary lockdown. Disaster. Opponent gets their creatures back. And this is also potentially an answer to some of our other artifacts and enchantments. So I guess glad they didn't destroy our multiverse. So we gotta go digging and hopefully find some action spells. Wandering Emperor's not bad. So I can discard multiverse and land and still be able to play Emperor. And then next turn we can invoke getting back one with the multiverse, potentially putting some counters on a samurai token as well. Partners is going to hurt. At least they don't have the soldiers to enable Vanguard. Lauren has Vigilance, so no exiling it with Wandering Emperor either. Guess we'll go for Bodyguard then. So now at least the depopulate is going to be more effective. And portal to Phyrexia, quite the draw. So make a Samurai, invoke, and then we can cast portal for free. Could have also gone back lockdown, but at this point we can do bigger and better things. Ooh, wow, Urtai Resurrected as their last card. Was not expecting a counterspell. So counter-invoke. At least we get to draw. Depopulate's not bad. 
but we're gonna take a significant hit if our opponent plays Joda, which I expect him to have, the five mana legend. We could just be dead. So hopefully that's not the case. So now we're on the depopulate plan. So I'm just gonna soak up as much damage as possible. And at least we dealt with the Vanguard, so they cannot protect the team. Still drop to three. And gain some life. Another one with the multiverse. I guess, let's see. What's my plan this turn? I can invoke justice, one with the multiverse, and then cast a free depopulate from my hand. And then next turn cast a free portal. Lockdown is also useful. Fateful Absence I'm not going to need just yet. Another option was, I guess, Free Portal and then a 2-mana Fateful Absence. But I think that still leaves us dead. We both get to draw. That works. Portal on top, and we can still cast a 2-mana Absence. So we're not in danger of dying to a Haste creature now. A Leveler coming up. Can probably get rid of Lockdown now. Okay, so feeling pretty good about things. Although another Loran is going to mess with our multiverse. That's unfortunate. And um, no point in killing it. So how close are we to hard casting Portal? I guess we won't be able to now. And Adlin, okay. Probably need to absence Adlin. We know we're drawing a leveler, which I cannot cast. So we're going to let it switch to night time in our turn, so we'll kill Adlin now. And then one portal can go. Cove sadly means still no leveler, as we drop to four. And we both get to draw, another portal, and another Adlin. And Lagrella to exile their own creature as insurance, all right. Thirsts. It's not going to be good enough here. So probably get rid of Portal. And then I can cast a Thirst. Hope to find a reanimation effect and a land. Alright, Invoke Justice is good. So now I can go with one with a Multiverse. Cast a free Portal. And take it from there. Play a land for free, and then a free portal to Phyrexia over Leveler. Could also Leveler kill Adlin. Is that better? Nah, this seems fine. And then our opponent will have to choose between destroying Multiverse or Portal. And we can still Thirst. But we are still at a precarious 5 life, facing a 4-3. So Joda is still lethal here, partners as well. And King Darian as well. Alright, that was unfortunate. So yeah, in hindsight, maybe just casting the leveler and destroying Adlin to have an 8-8 blocker left would have been safer than giving them the 4-4, since I kind of forgot the plus 1 counters from Lagrella. So GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is pretty decent. Just need to hit our land drops, and then we'll have a one with the multiverse. Let's see what we're up against. 
Blue white as well. Looks like soldier tribal. Alright. Hopefully dodge Thalia, which could slow us down. And then uh, I guess I should keep portal in hand to discard to Thirst. And then we might need a bit of interaction here to make sure we don't die. But uh, veteran is fine. Take four. Depopulate's looking good too. Or I can play Celestus and then I can still beat Thalia taxing us by one. So now it's mostly counter spells we're worried about. Okay, Sentinel protection from multicolored. And they might have access to a counter spell here. Opponent does gain a life. Let's see, six, seven, eight. I mean, I could still repair and recharge if they counter next turn, try again, maybe with a depopulate, and we'll be okay. The safest play would be depopulate first and then also have access to absence and take it from there. Right. No counter spell, it seems. Thalia now shows up, but uh, can still play a 6 mana repair. And how about a 1 with a multiverse? And then I can still cast a free repair, although I guess we'll need a land for that to work. My right, opponent actually had to protect the negotiators now, so they must have drawn that. I imagine. Right, opponent's committing now. And land is actually good, so now we can repair and recharge our one with the multiverse, and then I'll have to pay a one mana tax to play a spell that's otherwise free. Although a free a leveler is not bad either. Or I can just invoke justice and then make them sacrifice all three creatures, that's probably better. And then next turn we'll just cast the leveler for free. Alright, Shield of Argive. That's okay, I can exile it with a Brutal Cathar perhaps. Play another free multiverse, so we can cast more spells for free. Um, don't have a great target for leveler yet. Although, still an 8-8. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, GG's. So, got to see our blue-white reanimator deck in action. And oh boy, Portal to Phyrexia, quite the card. Definitely have to be prepared for the matchup with your counter spells. Thalia, also pretty good against us, even though it's not always necessarily enough. And then, as we saw, the uh, three mana creature that destroys an enchantment when it enters, also pretty good at keeping our artifacts and enchantments at bay. But you need to be able to kind of back it up with enough pressure as well since we can easily win a longer game. So yeah, quite impressed by this first take on Blue White Reanimator. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.